Hello with people, this is Christian, welcome back to my computer and Fusion 360. And in front of us we have a red knob, a quite simple shape, there's nothing really special about it. We're going to have a look at the drawing in a short while. This is another of my basic things uh, I'll get to do to show how to make things for you who are new to this software. And for you who are looking for more advanced software, have a look at my other videos. So, we're going to have a look at the drawing first of all. I'm going to make it full screen, so if you want to do a screen capture, you can do that. There are other ways of doing this. Play around, find other workflows. Uh, quite simple shape. We can see we have like a smaller round part at the bottom here. We have a little bit like the larger of the top part here. The top uh, part has like a convex shape here. The bottom shape is a bit concave. It's basically just a, a, a angle part here. Um, and as we can see, um, all the parts of this shape is symmetrical around the center point here or the center axis. If things are, I'm going to leave this like this, going to jump over here, I have a new design here. If we have something that are uh, symmetrically around a center line or center axis, we like to use revolve. We need a profile and we need an axis and we can revolve most of the shape in one simple revolve and it's easy to edit the sketch so that's what i'm going to use let's move things around i'm going to move that over here and that over here so we can have a look at the dimensions hope you can see everything uh, so we have like two parts we have this larger shape here with three cutouts okay we are three cutouts so obviously these are symmetrical patterns so that's a circular pattern okay we know that we need to do one of those and we need to make large body and we have a smaller body down here so yeah i'm going to start with the larger part of this i've already made a save and just to be a good user i'm going to make this its own component it might be i like to import this into another uh, assembly or something so i'm going to put it in its own component start by sketching sketch sketch on the front and we are going to create the large body. As I said, what do we have here? We have a height of 35. We have a diameter of 60. We have this arc shape up here. And we have an angle up here. So, okay. Let's start with simple lines. The first line I want to do, I want to make the center line. And, of course, it uh, starts from origin. I'm using the origin plane. I want to lock everything down to this origin point. So, I'm going to make this line here. I select center line because that gives me some special features with infusion we're going to see this in a short while the bottom is a straight line so i'm going to make a line like this i'm going to make a line up like that escape to stop line command uh, arc three point arc select these two points and simply do the arc something like that and i like that so the problem here now is that i can drag this point around and obviously uh, we want this point top up here to be tangent in this direction. So make make a small line. I make a construction line. I use construction lines to keep things visible for myself. Some people avoid construction lines. That's up to you. Going to put a horizontal vertical constraint. In this case, vertical. That means that this now arcs get a bit constrained. Doesn't want to fly around as much. And now we can start adding dimensions. We have all the geometry I need. D for dimension. We start with this. This is the height. Uh, that was 35. Sorry. 35, like that. And we're going to do... Let's do the diameter. Here, the center line is really good. We select the center line. We select the point out here. And because I started with the center line, Fusion understands, I want to input a diameter. So we do that 60. Uh, let's give that the draft angle between these two. We can put it down here. That's a five degree. It jumps away. Uh, angular uh, dimension of the dust this. It jumps around like a maniac. Uh, D for dimension once more. And the R here. That is supposed to be 70. And we have a fully. Let's open our sketch. We have a fully defined sketch. All dimensions are given. I'm going to finish sketch. I'm going to use the revolve tool. And as you see, when I start revolve tool, Fusion sees, okay, you have a center line and you have a profile in the sketch. That's all I have. So most probably you want to revolve the profile around that center line. And we're just going to simply hit OK. Uh, I have uh, auto hide the sketch turned off, so I need to manually hide this. 
open up other bodies because I know this is like yes I said I don't know if I said it, but these are two bodies in my mind. So I've got to make the first one body, hide it, make the second body, and then combine them. So we are working with the larger body. We have made this. I like to do this cutout here. Create sketch. Make sure I select the original plane here. I'm going to hide the body for now. Uh, and if we have a look at this, we have a cutout to the right. So I like to do the same way. I'm simply going to make a circle. Circle out here, C of the keyboard to start circle, L on the keyboard to start the line command, construction line. Once again, I make a construction line, I prefer that. You could use, use a horizontal vertical, vertical constraint between the origin point and the center point of a circle. I like to use a construction line, it makes it easier for me. Uh, D for dimension, uh, this is given like a radius, so we're going to click on the circle. And to make it easy for ourselves, I'm going to right click and say I want to input a radius dimension. This means I'm using the same numbers as in the drawing. Uh, let's see. And there's a 12 millimeter distance from the center to the tangent point of this uh, circle here, or arc. This is arc, but I'm sketching a full circle. So we could use dimension from tangent point, but there's a small other way. Sometimes you want a dimension from intersecting points and stuff, it can be hard to find them. S on the keyboard and start typing in point. Point gives you the ability to add a point. And the good thing that that point will snap to multiple geometry at the same time. So if I do that here, that point gets snapped to the circle and to the line. I can now hit D for dimension, select the point and the region point here and type in 12. This gives me a quite stable sketch. So you can use a dimension tangent or whatever you do. This is just my preferred method. As I said, there are multitudes of ways of doing things. Uh, if we have a lift, this is a simple straight extrude. We could turn on our first sketch just for the fun of it. I'm gonna hit E for extrude. Extrude this profile. How far? We can now use to object and use for previous sketch. Top point, nothing is higher than this. And turn on our body. And because we turn on our body, it's gonna transfer into a cut. We can hit OK. So I made one cut, S on the keyboard, find circular pattern, type in circular pattern. We want to make a pattern of a feature, our extrude feature. Axis, we can simply select the outside or the center line here, or yeah, let's just let's simply, so, oh, sorry, feature. We can select this extrude feature. Axis is going to be, we can select, select the outside face of the uh, cone shape here or we can select the center line here or we can find the axis in the middle let's just do see if we can select that yes please uh, I just in this case we are basically doing the same we should be able to optimize because we want to pattern this face three times it doesn't intersect with everything else so just do it optimized these are a bit confusing sometimes the compute options hit ok and we have a little feet let's hide the sketches for now so we have made the basic shape of this. So what I want to do now, I want to hide this body and start working with the second body here. Create a sketch from the front. Uh, these are dimensions are given to the right. So I'm going to sketch them to the right. I once again, going to start with the center line. I'm going to keep on sketching lines, but I'm going to turn off the center line, of course, because did it, did we do that? we're going to have a look at that. And we're gonna do go straight down like this. Let's find that. So if I move over a point, I move over. I should get the point popping up, and let's go back like that. And that line is a center line. Yes, everything is good. D for dimension. So I'm gonna select the center line and the outside line. And you see, we get the diameter, and this was 52 millimeters. Sorry, 52. I move my mouse cursor around. Uh, and the outside here you can see here is marked uh, this time at the 10 is to the sharp point of this not the fillet corner so this here is going to be 10 and the angle of these two is going to be 15. let's move it slightly out of the way like that going to finish sketch and we're going to once again do not do revolve and the fusion sees we have one Profile, we have one center line, so it's going to revolve that for us. And we want to do, we can now turn on the first body. Fusion says, Oh, you want to cut? No, I want to do a join. And I'm going to hit OK. 
So by doing the larger body, body first and then the smaller, I could make a join. Of course, we could make revolve like a new body and then combine it later. That's up to you. There's a lot of different ways to do this. So we have made most of the front or top things here. What we haven't done, let's move over, is the fillet. 2mm cord length. I have a constant cord left, not constant radius of the fillet. So let's do that. We're going to create, oh sorry, modify is it, fillet. And now, it's, how do we select all the edges? Well, I'm going to look from the front, so I see most of the edges. I do not want to select the edges at the bottom. If you have a look at models, you move it over here. There's no fillet at the bottom. It's only fillet on the top side edges. So I will go up under selection. Make silo sure on my silo. Oh, I hate these pop-ups. Select through is on. So I can select both on the front of the back of the body. And my select priority is edges. So it only selects edges. By moving from the right to the left. Oh, sorry. Of course, it was wrong. I want to have... This sometimes is easy to, you have this window selection free from selection, paint selection, and that's connected to one, two, three. So if you have a look at that, if I hit the one, it's quite hard to see. You can see it changes. So in this case, I want window selection, number one. Let's once again go back and do a fillet. I don't know how often, now you can see it better. I want the window selection, that's number one. Going to select, make sure my select filter. I hate this pop up, it always covers the things I want to see. So, a bit over here. Select through is active. And my select priority, I want to select edge priority. Move from the right to the left, making a window that's touching all the edges I want. And if I release now, why did you select faces? Did I not select priority correctly? Select priority, edge priority. Let's do once more. Like that. Okay, now we get to, Oh, I might have selected that previously. Let's see. Will I get all the edges selected? Yes, I did. So that is how. Sorry if I'm confusing you now. But this is one way to select a multitude of edges. This is one thing that Fusion is lacking in. Other software, you can select one edge. And Fusion will see, okay, you have a circular pattern. You want to select the rest of edges. That's another thing. Uh, radius type. We want cord length. And we want the dimension to be 2 millimeters. And wait for fusion. Uh, rolling ball, yes, that's correct. Hit OK. I like constant cord length. It gives you this bit nicer. It gives some bad geometry sometimes, but it's up to you. You can do whatever you want. I'm going to show. So, the last thing we want to do is the hole at the bottom. So, let's have a look at this here. The flat side was oriented to one of these edges. So let's have a look at the front and rotate it like this. Let's look at the bottom. So, we have one of these arms here. So, you want the flat on that side going to hide the body, create a sketch of a plane. We have two things. We have a circle. Uh, that circle is 8 millimeters. We're going to move a dimension out of the way. We have a line. Simply make the line like this. In this case, we could, as once again I said, we can make a dimension from a data point, or we can make a second line. That's a construction line from the midpoint straight over to here and now we can dimension this construction line it's up to you i want to dimension and that was 6.5 why do you not take my number somewhere 6.5 finish sketch i'm gonna hit e for extrude select for profile and the depth of that cat was 20 millimeters and the body was hidden so it tries to create a new body turn off the body and we get the cut i'm gonna hit ok and hide the last sketch. So, with that done, we have made, and actually we can put on some component cards when we do that, we have made a nice small knob. And by doing it in this way, we can very easily go back and change things. Let's see, that is my sketch for the extrude. That's what's extrude for that face there. So if we don't count five things sometimes, let's see, let's change our select priority. I'm going to maximize for windows easier to see here over here i move up the select priority so i can turn off edge priority here so i can select anything i want if i highlight this face and you move down to timeline you say okay that face is created by that extrude and that means because i do sketch feature that sketch is the one that's created the shape of that extrude and i can double click that to edit it so let's make that really small. I can make that into 20 millimeters now. 
I get this shape of a knob. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Let's go back, undo all of that. Maybe I want to draft with these outwards. I can edit this extrude here. I'm extruding full circle, so I can give this a taper of like minus 15 degrees. If I do that, I get this type of knob. So by being very carefully how I set up my things, do not do too much things at the same time. I can do a lot of things like this, like edit small things. Oh, sorry, I'm going to move up one step like that. And I'm, I'm just undo the things I do. Undo and redo is really do good up here. So we can do things. And of course, we can change most of the dimensions as long as we don't crash the dimensions. Maybe we want a larger shape here. Maybe it's supposed to be 65 millimeters. And we still have a function model. So this is how I would create an app like this. I hope you found something useful in this. With that said, take care, see you around, and goodbye.